So, hi everyone. I grew up in a world that was dominantly linear. By just looking in the rearview mirror, I replicated most of what I saw, and I crafted a future for myself. My dad, for example, he studied applied economic sciences at university in Antwerp, so I simply copied him, stepped in his shoes, and it worked out pretty well. It was also a world where craftsmanship ruled. What you see here is a sketcher in Montmartre who is drawing a beautiful portrait, and it makes him a good living. So what people know and what they master made all of the difference. And finally, as you can clearly tell from this picture, the world was scarce. This is a picture of me in 1973, the moment or the year during which the global oil crisis hit the world hard. And so people gained power by owning, controlling, and managing scarce resources and money. So this world of linearity, craftsmanship, and scarcity worked out pretty well for me. My grades at school and university were good. I got myself a PhD. I turned it into becoming a marketing professor. I co-founded my own company. And today, I'm the CEO of a company which is the third most innovative market research agency in the world. Pretty good. Thank you. But the world today is exactly the opposite from the world I knew as a child. The world is accelerating, which means that copying from the past is no longer an option. The world is automating, which means that being out of a job will be more normal than having a job. And finally, the world is abundant, meaning all of us will become less valuable because of what we know or because of what we can. And so being a market researcher and being passionate about why people do things, what are the deeper motivations of people, what are the resulting behaviors, all of that makes me tick. And it made me wonder how humans will be affected by so much deep change around them, around uh, their environment. And so I started thinking about this, and I came up to the conclusion that probably we need to find a new edge for ourselves. Because if the very things that give us a meaning in life, like having a job or knowing how to do something, is increasingly at risk, I think we need to reinvent ourselves. And so, when thinking about this question, I thought, who has done this before? And Steve Jobs referred to them as the crazy ones, those daring and brilliant minds who were crazy enough to think they can change the world. And I think, you know, what characterizes all of those crazy ones is the fact that they left the path of average and they started exploring the edges. And I think we can not reinvent the wheel, but learn from them, apply their best practices. I'm going to just share with you four things all of the crazy ones share. Today, we know Stephen Hawking as probably the most brilliant mind on this planet. And for people having a non-scientific mind, it's really hard to grasp his theories. But it might surprise you that when he was younger, he was really a slacker when it comes to his school studies. So at the age of nine, Stephen Hawking basically had the lowest grades in his class. And even though he was pushed to do a little bit better, he could only bring up his grades to average. But instead, he cultivated a kind of curiosity to understand the inner working of things. And so what he did for as a hobby, for example, was to disassemble clocks and radios just to understand how things work. He admits he wasn't really able to put them back together, but that's something else. So I think what all of this learns is that in fact, instead of being rewarded for accumulating more knowledge, probably we should be rewarding ourselves for destroying the knowledge we have. Just think about it. The 10 most in-demand jobs today didn't even exist 10 years ago. So we need to leave behind the principles we use to look at this world and to understand the change around us, because the world is moving so fast. 
we probably need to start accepting more that there is no ultimate final truth out there, and we need to keep on revisiting our, our assumptions on how the world works. So we raise. Did you know that Steve Jobs ever considered joining a monastery and become a monk? Eventually, he didn't. But he was a fierce practitioner of Zen Buddhism instead. So he met up with his coach, Kobun Otagawa, about every day. And every couple of months, they will go on a joint uh, retreat together. Now, Jobs discovered the power of just sitting and observing, of taking more time and room to hear more subtle things, to see more clearly and to be in the present more. So he slowed down his brain. And by doing that, he was able to see so much more than he had ever seen before. So a second way to move to the edges is to take more time to digest and reflect. Herbert Simon already predicted back in 1971 that richness in attention is going to lead to shortage, or richness in information is going to lead to shortage in attention. We live in an always-on world where we are having a continuously partial attention to everything around us. So we take kind of a grasshopper perspective, moving from one thing to the other. We don't take a helicopter perspective. We switch and shift and click through all the screens and messages we get to see, meaning there is no brain bandwidth left to think. And I think by disconnecting our brain from the massive change around us, it will enable us to understand that change better. It will enable us to have a more holistic view on the world, connecting dots between things that seem seemingly unconnected. Aristotle. Aristotle made some great discoveries in his life. But he was wrong quite a couple of times. One of the things he got wrong is thinking that your heart is the center of all human intelligence. Another thing he thought is that the gender of goats depends on the direction the wind is blowing. But I think going back to the heart as a center of intelligence is quite an interesting thought. Because Aristotle, he listened to the subtle signals his subconscious mind was sending out, saying something was not wrong, something was not right, I mean. Something didn't really fit the picture of the world he imagined. And his gut feel told him there is kind of a disconnect from everything he knew before. And so he acted upon that later. So I think a third wave to move to your edges is to start trusting your gut, your intuition, way more than we've done before. Your smartphone contains more information than you will possibly ever be able to handle, let alone use, in an entire lifetime. And that means that the wealth of information and the diversity and the volume of information we have probably means we're going to outsource all of that fact-based rational decision-making to more competent, efficient, smart machines. So what's left for us humans? I think we need to go back to something which is unique to humans over robots, which is intuition. Basically, we all have it. It's here. It's your stomach, and it's called the second brain. We simply have left it behind a long time ago, and we're not cultivating the strength anymore, so we can do more there. Finally, I cannot have this talk without referring to Einstein. As some of you might think, Einstein ended up getting to his great discoveries, not by running lab experiments, but by running visual experiments instead. He called them Gedanken Experimenten, or thought experiments. For example, he imagined thinking about a moving train, and the lightning strikes in the front and the back of that moving train. If you're watching the train from a distance, it feels like the lightning strikes the train in the front and the back at exactly the same timing. If you are inside a train, 
you get a very different feeling because it feels the lightning strikes in the front just a couple of milliseconds before it strikes in the back. And so by just imagining this, he arrived at the conclusion that our perception is dependent on state of motion, meaning time is not absolute, time is relative. Hence, the special theory of relativity. And so finally, we need to envision more. We can move to the edges by visualizing our future. I think it's important for two reasons. First of all, our capacity for imaginative thinking as a human being, it drops over time when we grow older. At the age of zero, when we get born, it's at 100%. When we are 12, it's 50%. When we are 16, it's 20%. And when we graduate from university, it's only 10% that is left. So we need to start you know, becoming more creative in a visual way. But also, the future is unfolding in an exponential way. It's not linear. So we need to trick our brain, saying the future is going to be here much faster than it actually we think it is. So when any exponential technology is at 1% of performance, we have to make our brain think we're already halfway. Summarizing, I think we can you know, find our new edge by learning how to unlearn, by taking the time to digest, slow down the brain, by trusting our gut more, and by finally envisioning a future that's going to be here much faster than we think. And so we th I think we can all move to the edges. It's not going to be easy. So I challenge all of you to get behind the steering wheel, even though your feet might not get to the pedals yet, and even though you might not be able to see through the front window perfectly, it's time to shift gears up. Because in a world that's increasingly accelerating, automated and abundant, what was crazy yesterday is normal today. Good luck with that.